Hello and welcome to the Across the Pitch pre-party. My name is Phil Kennedy and I'm here with my co-host Tony Robinson, where we're very excited to uh, have the guest today who uh, currently has played more minutes than uh, than anybody for Accrington Stanley this season. Uh, uh, 27 starts, uh, 2,350 minutes. Uh, we're talking about none other than uh, Liam Coyle. Uh, he is uh, a guy who has really uh, shown his versatility over the past few weeks in stepping in and uh, playing some positions that uh, he wasn't normally playing and, and filling in due to some injuries. Uh, how are you doing today, Tony? Uh, I'm good, Phil. How are you? And I uh, uh, hope you're well because it's nice to be with you again. And yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, to speaking with Liam uh, today because he's he is one of the players that I sort of looked at uh, uh, last year, and, and I thought, and I just like the, you know, I, I, he's a player you, you just, you kind of, you gotta love, and um, one of the things that, well, you know, the, the description I found, uh, people talk about him and describe him as a, a combative uh, midfielder. So we'll get his thoughts on that, and <laughs> um, and 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 I, I'm surprised, that, you know, but. Uh, again, uh, with the number of minutes you said he's played, but with all the injuries, I suppose that's um, uh, it, it's an accomplishment to get to that. But uh, I'd hate I, I'd hate to know where we'd be without him this year. I'll tell you that. Yeah, and yeah, and and I and I think the um, he might get overtaken now because he's got a suspension for a couple of games, and we'll talk to him about that. But um, yeah, before you bring him in, just to let people know, we've had a. A busy month. We've got we've had several podcasts that we put out uh, that are going out now on a Tuesday a morning in the UK time. Uh, and if people haven't had a chance to listen to them, go go on to our website uh, www.acrosspitch.com and check out Ethan Hamilton. Uh, Peter Latham was on last week, uh, and many more that we've had uh, on there. So check it out. Phil and I are available and can be reached on. Uh, uh, on Twitter and Facebook. So, uh, yeah, check us out and uh, looking forward to speaking to Liam. So uh, without further ado, Phil. Yeah, let's uh, let's bring uh, Liam on board. And, and absolutely, uh, uh, with the uh, the website, uh, you can also, the, uh, the last five uh, most recent episodes are right there on the front page. So if you just go to acrossthepitch.com, uh, right there at the, uh, the top of the page, you will see the... Uh, a little web player where you can listen to the last five uh, episodes. Uh, and this episode with uh, Liam will be at the uh, the top of that list as soon as we put it out. So uh, let's get him on board here. Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, depending on what side of the pond you're on. And welcome to an extra special edition of Across the Pitch. My name is Phil Kennedy, and I'm here with my co-host, Tony Robinson, where we welcome in the current leader in minutes played for Accrington Stanley this season, none other than Liam Coyle. Uh, Liam has started 27 matches for Aki this year, uh, playing over uh, 2,350 minutes so far, which is uh, tops on the team. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us today, Liam, and, and welcome to the show. No worries. Thanks very much for having me. Well, absolutely. Yes, it's, that's a nice uh, nice stat to have, but you might put a, I hate to start off the, the chat with this, but you, you're you going to have a, a dent put in that in the next couple of matches, aren't you, Liam? Yeah, of course. It's, it's, it's you know, I love playing. It's it's what I'm at the, at the football clubs to do. It's what all players are there to do. Um, you want to play as many minutes and matches as possible to them. Um, Try and help the team out, but obviously, yeah, it is frustrating getting a two game suspension. Um, I think sometimes with the way I play, um, I'm bound to get yellow cards, but there's been a few silly ones in there as well. So it's something I need to maybe try and take help me game a little bit, but obviously, I can't change the way I play because that, that's what gets me to where, where I am really. Yeah, yeah we'll, t- we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. I just wanted to, to, uh, Mention. I don't know if you remember. We we actually met there back in last August September, um, yeah, and, 
yeah, yeah, I was with Jimmy Bell, who's showing me through the uh, new changing rooms before you. Um, and anyway, we set, we we sort of planted the seed about you coming on, and it's and um, it's taken some time, but uh, you know we saved the best to last and got you on anyway. So. Um, <laughs> We um we just won't, might as well just start at the beginning because that's uh, we like to find out you know sort of the history of the player and your journey to Stanley and and you started uh, your youth career at a young age and we were we were about nine when you started with Liverpool. Um yeah, I joined Liverpool at nine. It was yeah the under ten age group that was the, the season I started there. Yeah. And was that is that your uh, your boyhood team? Is that somebody the team that you sort of were were following at the time or? Yeah, definitely. I've always been a, a Liverpool supporter from, from as long as I can remember, really. Um, so that was obviously, I think at the time, you don't really realise what you're going into. Um, you're just there to play football and enjoy yourself and, and try and, yeah, just work hard. I've always been a hard worker, work hard and try and improve and see where it takes me, yeah. So it must be uh, good to be able to play for a fellow Liverpool supporter with, uh, with John Colbert, huh? Yeah, it is. It's great. Yeah, we, we talk about the, uh, the Liverpool games quite a lot and, and different things. Obviously, I've come out of that setup now and, and come to Athens. And so it's interesting, like, talking about Liverpool and sometimes don't get to watch them as much as I used to. Um, but I'm always following the results and all the games when I can, yeah. There's quite a few uh, Liverpool and uh, Everton fans, both within the uh, the Akrington locker room. So I imagine there there's quite a bit of banter uh, between the two sides uh, where, where they meet up. Yeah, there is. Obviously, we beat them 2-0 the other night at, uh, at Anfield. So we've had the bragging night this time, which we generally do, being a little bit <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think um, the Everton uh, uh, contingent in the in the change room might be a little bit uh, uh, quieter this season. I mean, they've uh, they are uh, having a tough go of it, and uh, you know, for uh, hopefully for the blue side of Liverpool that they can uh, they can pull it out because I think I think it's best for Liverpool when you've got the two teams going at each other in the Premier the Premier League. Yeah, that is. Uh, yeah, it's obviously great having a derby. It's always a game you look out for in the fixtures. Uh, but it would be quite funny to see them go down, I think, and, and see what happens. But I think, um, I think now they've got Sean Dyson, I think they, they'll be able to grab a few more points, and I think they'll just stay up, I think, yeah. Well, I was uh, when I was a um, a boy and a young lad in Accrington, and and I used to go to uh, Burnley to watch them, and so I've always had a soft spot for Burnley, and um, and seeing Sean Dice, I mean, I was a big fan, and very disappointed we left, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think really for the uh, position that Everton's in, you know, you've got the right guy uh, in it because uh, you know if anybody can do it, he can. So. But uh, anyway, we want to talk about your your career and uh, the um, I, I when I was looking doing some work on getting ready for the for this and um, I noticed that you, you when you were in the under 18s you were the captain under uh, Stephen Gerrard and um, and he he had quite some quite good things to say about you. Uh, what what was that experience like? Uh, that was great to be honest. I, I absolutely loved working under. Uh under Steven Gerrard, uh, as well as all the other coaches I played under, but um, especially him being like me, me boy all day, all life, I grew up watching him play, scoring winners, he was always like the, my favourite player, he was the, everyone, every young lad looked up to Steven Gerrard and, and wanted to be him, do you know what I mean? Um, so playing under him was a bit mad. He come in the year before, um, the year before with the under-18s helping out before he took over, um, so we obviously had an idea he might have been taking over, but even then he was he was drilling into us about winning and, and, and different things. And even when he weren't the manager, he was desperate for us to win. And he's, he's just got that winning mentality in him, um, and that was that was great for me. I I think he knew what he was going to get from me every time we were on the pitch. So that that stood me in good stead. And um, I was disappointed. Obviously, I picked up an injury two months into that season, which set me back for the near enough the full year. Um, so it was disappointing uh, from that point of view, but the confidence that he gave me with things that he said and the things that he helped me with and saying in pictures was massive for me. Well, what are the uh, the descriptives that they had in that article there for you? Is that they described you uh, at that point as a combative midfielder? Would you say that's a good description of your playing style? 
Uh, yeah, that definitely set a good description of me playing style. Um, throwing off, I played various different positions for for Liverpool, uh, for Liverpool and the youth setups. So I ended up playing full back quite a lot. I played centre back quite a lot. Um, I didn't grow any any taller, so that sort of uh, took me out of me me centre back slot. But I always felt like my best position was was a midfielder. Um, and yeah, I, I like to bat, I like to win the ball back and and. That's absolutely, uh, it's absolutely critical to have someone like you to be able to, to bring some toughness in there in the midfield and, and win those battles. Uh, and another quote from the, uh, the Liverpool website, it said that, that you're a renowned tough tackler who patrols the area in front of your back for breaking up the play and setting up your counter attack. So, I mean, that, uh, that's exactly what you just said. That that's your your style yeah. of play, and, and that's uh, that's the the big thing that you're bringing to the table week in and week out. And we definitely see that at Akerton. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's it's obviously a big part of my game. Um, I obviously try and work on on different parts of my game. Like sometimes I think it could be better on the ball, make better decisions um, in different game scenarios. Obviously, you come up against different types of opposition teams that press you high teams that sit off you, so you have got to be able to handle the ball as well. Um, I try and play two touch and, and give it to the players, like like the attacking players, um, we go and make things happen. But yeah, I think my energy in there is a big thing as well. Um, fitness, I obviously had quite a lot of injuries when I was at Liverpool towards the back end, uh, so fitness was a bit of a worry for me before I joined Atkinson, but touch wood, I haven't, I haven't had any, any big injuries yet. Um, I've been... Um, I've felt the fittest that I've felt, yeah. Well, that, and that we t- you mentioned just earlier on, and that's one of our uh, leads into one of our next questions is um, the injury you had um, um, to it was a, I guess a, a, what I found was it said stress fractures in your back um, yeah. that that set you back. Uh, how old were you when that happened, and and how um, how long were you the action and out of out of play and and how did how did that impact you uh, at Liverpool? Um, I think I was just about to turn eighteen when I had my first first back injury. Um, it was in the September of two thousand seventeen. Um, so that set me back until April two thousand eighteen. So that was a good seven eight months off. Um, so that basically wrote off my entire season. Um, I'd never really had that long of a period out before. I'd always. I'd always been quite fortunate without getting injuries growing up. Um, so that was that was a big it was hard to take um to not be playing and you know, all the other had to go into training and playing matches. I was still there to support the team, uh, going to away games and, and all sorts because I loved being involved in it. Um but it was really tough to, to not play at that time, yeah. Do you think that was uh, sort of, um, you know, as I say, put put you behind the eight ball at, at Liverpool trying to play catch up? Um, when I come back from that injury in, in 2018, um, I got back really fit and I ended up finishing the season playing one or two under 23 games um, as an under 18 player. So at that point, now I felt like it was a little setback and I, I come back ready to go and I was, I was fit then going into the, the next season. Um, and I was fifth for most of that season then, really. Um, that was in the under-23 setup then, so there was sometimes I missed games um, due to being left out, like dropping down from Melwood in the first team, or just not getting picked, which is something that I weren't as used to growing up in the youth setups. Um, so I had to, I had to keep, keep fighting and keep pushing for that position, but I still felt like I performed quite well that year. But then the same back injury hit again, um, the following April, so that sent me back again for the the next season. Yeah, so I mean that had to probably be uh, the most difficult time for you. It's like you said, you're uh, you're a footballer, you want to play football, and and you were having the the setbacks with the uh, the back injuries and whatnot. Uh, so then uh, then you you were at, at loan on uh, or you went out on loan to Bolton. Uh, tell us more about uh, that your time with Bolton and, and how that all went. Um, that's a funny one actually because I never actually went out on loan to Bolton. Um, I know it says that on on the internet, and I've always been confused. Oh. Um, <laughs> well, so, so. <laughs> yeah, it that, that on the website, but I was an under twenty one player for Bolton, um, and it was actually on the ESL website. 
but I hadn't signed any forms or anything like that. I went in to trial on Bolton before I ended up coming in trial for Atkinson. So it was just a two-week trial period with them, to be honest. The uh, oh. the the Bolton newspaper, and I forget the name, did did actually say that, but everything else said that. Uh, and I think I think the same person who wrote that you went on loan uh, to Bolton is the same guy that put down this Doug Doug Tharn being a Welsh. So we'll blame it on the same, <laughs> blame it on the same guy. <laughs> um, one, yeah, I was going to say so. Sometimes that happens where uh, something will get uh, incorrect on the internet, and it, it gets onto the next article. The next article after that. So our job is to make sure that that we'll go ahead and, and correct the story for everybody. <laughs> well, yeah, we we don't. We don't have a uh, in-depth research department, so we, we if we make a mistake, we take have to take. We can't blame it on anybody else but ourselves. But um, yeah, yeah. the time the time you were at Bolton, just for that on that sort of that trial uh, spell, uh, was that the time that they were they in administration or were they sort of coming out of that uh, back in that in that day uh, in that time? Uh, no, that was in twenty twenty one. Would that have been? But, okay. Yeah, 2021, um, and they were in League Two, uh, 18th in the league when I went in on sale, um, and that was the year he ended up getting promoted. Um, you know, automatically come up from League Two to League One. Uh, I remember training with them and thinking, but they are they're, they're a good team. These I don't know how they're 18th in League Two, and then. Come May, I was looking at the table thinking, bloody hell, they've went off automatic. So it was nice <laughs> yeah. for them. Yeah. Yeah, I think they got the third, the last automatic spot towards right at the end of the season, I believe. But um, what? And um, and that was in June of twenty one. Then when you were uh, you were let go at Liverpool, and 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 you you did, you were quoted saying you were a bit mad walking out of the gates at Kirby on your last day, walking to your car and thinking that's me done here. Uh, yeah. And then you said well, there's no tears because I know for a while I knew for a while that was day was coming but it was still really tough it was my dream to make it at Liverpool that didn't happen in the end but I can't waste time moping around I need to crack on with the next challenge I mean that's yeah. that's the attitude I mean I know it's easy to say that you have to take but how war, how hard was it sort of um, putting yourself in that position and saying that you had to crack on and um, to be honest because I knew for such a long time and um, because of all the COVID situation I knew I was getting an extra contract at Liverpool um, before I left, so the last year I sort of knew my time was up, um, and obviously that was tough to take because when I was fit and I was training well, I was still thinking, oh, you know, there's still a chance of playing this 23s team and and impress, and and you never know what's going to happen. But the longer time went on, and I kept getting injuries again. I remember going to speak to the academy director and and the under 23 manager and said, I, I need to get out on trials at different places. Um, so that was the season I ended up coming on trial to Atkinson. I think it was in the, the February or March of 2021. I come to Atkinson for the two week trial. Um, so I was already, I, I was still a Liverpool player, but I didn't see him as a Liverpool player for that last year. So maybe that made it a little bit easier um, walking out because I was just desperate to go and play football again. Um, but yeah, like you said, you've just got to, I've, I've seen hundreds, hundreds of players come and go from the academy. Uh, I've had lots of mates growing up there. Um, and some leave at 14, some leave at 16, 18, um, all over the place. So I felt lucky to have been there for that long. And, and yeah, coming out of that bubble and, and going into something new was, was exciting, even though it was Dorton, yeah. The uh, we we talked to a, an ex Stanley player a while back called Chris Turner who's a teacher now in Burnley, and he was let go f- from Burnley, um, and he it was sort of hit him all of a sudden and 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 he talked about the uh, everyone expected it was and the pressures and everything that came with it. I sp- the mental atti- uh, attitude though is really sort of. Um, uh, you know, important and, and you having been able to prepare mentally for that day obviously stood put you in good stead. Yeah, definitely it did. Um, I obviously I knew that was coming and even when I went to the trial at Ashington and, and I got a phone call on in March saying that I had um, that they were gonna offer me a contract. I couldn't wait to get to Ashington then to the, to go and say May. Unfortunately I picked up another injury which put me back till May so I couldn't actually do that. So the last two months at Liverpool, I was just on the injury table and then trying to get fit, ready for pre-season at Atkinson. So I knew I had something to aim for and, and there was a goal to aim for. 
Well, we're, we're definitely glad that, that you found your way to Accrington. Now, uh, one thing uh, before we uh, – we're going to do Tony's fun questions here in a minute. But one thing we did want to ask you about real quick uh, is that we had noticed that in uh, – I guess it was March of 2019 – uh, that you'd been called up to the Northern Ireland under-21 team. Uh, tell us a bit about uh, how did you qualify for that, and, and what was that experience like? Uh, well, on me dad's side of the family, one of me grandparents is from Northern Ireland, and the other one's from Republic of Ireland. So all the way growing up um, in the youth setup, I'd been asked at under-16, under-17, under-18, to go and play for the um, Republic of Ireland and not, well, it was more Republic of Ireland at that point. Um but because of the fact that when the first team players at Liverpool were going international, it would give us more of a chance to go into the same with the first team, uh during the international break. So I used to turn down playing for international because I wanted to go and try and train at Melwood and try and prove myself there. And um, looking back now it probably would have been a good experience to go and play international football and that's why I took up the opportunity at under 21 because I thought you know what why don't I just go for it and then uh, and see what happens but unfortunately before I, I went I got, I got injured again so I didn't end up making a, an international appearance well, that's uh, that's too bad that you had that, that injury happen because a lot of the guys that we have talked about have said that when you, you do the uh, the international team said that one of the big things is just uh, the chance to be able to, to meet some other players and, and do some traveling and, and things like that. So uh, well, you know, hopefully you'll time, get Bill. some, yeah, time. I was trying to get a say exactly. It's hopefully in that the future you'll uh, get, uh, get a chance to do that. And uh, for the people that we've talked to, it definitely uh, sounds like a great experience from, from every, everybody we've asked about it, but uh, yeah. let's go ahead and, uh, and, and, Talk a little non-football stuff here. Uh, this is, uh, it started off where Tony just wanted to do some fun uh, North England versus South England. And uh, now it's probably the most popular segment on our show. Uh, I'll just turn it over to Tony for the uh, world famous rapid fire. <laughs> I, I pay him to say. I pay him to say that, uh, William. So it's not, it's, you know, anyway, here we go. Just, uh, yeah. Um, do you, do you prefer most of your garden peas with your fish and chips? Which sorry? Sorry. What was that? Sorry. Oh, say that. Okay. I'll start again. Do you prefer most of your garden peas with your fish and chips? Um, mushy peas. Red or brown sauce on your bacon sandwich. Brown sauce. Uh, black pudding with your full English, yes or no? Yes. Uh, gravy Definitely or some northern answers. <laughs> oh yeah, if anybody uh, from Lancashire has to have black pudding. Um, <laughs> gra- gravy or curry on your chips? Um, oof. I'd go gravy, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gravy's got got to be number one. It's one of the food. It's one of the main foreign food groups in uh, in in Accrington. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> great. <yeah>. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, do you have a favorite band or musician? And uh, no, you know what? I struggle with that sometimes. I just listen to what's popular at the minute. Uh, I get a, a lot of my uh, music from other people, like in the the car school driving, and I sort of pick up what what they put on. Um, Jamie Webster, in, who's from Liverpool. I don't know if you've heard of him. Um, I've been yeah. to a few of his concerts because he's, uh, he's local. So, yeah, he's doing well at the minute. So, I'll give him a, a mention, yeah. <laughs> good, good. Sounds good. Um, do you have a, a hobby outside of football? Um... <laughs> Does watching football count? Um, yeah, oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. That's a popular yeah. answer. Yeah. Yeah. Or going that's, on that's, I love walk it. with the dog and my girlfriend. Quite enjoy that now as well. Oh, very good. Um, yeah, I got to give a shout out to the girlfriend, obviously. Um, <laughs> which um, which player on the team has the best sense of humor? Best sense of humor. Um, Josh Woods is, is very funny. I, I'm, I'm very close with him. Um, yeah, he, he, he's a bit of a bit of a class clown, yeah. Like, okay, good. Like, 
<laughs> okay. Uh, do you have a favorite takeaway? Uh, Chinese would be my favorite takeaway, yeah. Chinese. Yep. That's just going for one answer. If yeah. it is family, if this was family feud, yeah, Chinese would definitely be number yeah. one answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, do you have any pre match superstitions? Um, yeah, I tend to have the same meal every single night when I'm at home before games. That'll be like a, a chicken curry and rice or homemade with, with loads of veg in. Um, That'd be it for now. I used to have more, but I, I sort of sacked them off a few years ago after I kept getting the injuries. So that's good. I was a like, nice, nice meal. Yeah, yeah, it is, uh, it's just sometimes because we've had that many games. I was saying last last week, I'm getting a bit bored of having it. I might need to change it up and, and pick something new and stick to that for another uh, another six months. So maybe yeah. change it up every six months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you um do you follow any North American sports? Um, no, sometimes I, I do. I just, when I'm sat there in bed there uh, late on, I, I put the Sky Sports channels on and have a look, but I wouldn't say I follow them. No, I wouldn't follow them, no. Yeah, because it seems to be there's more of, um, there's a NFL, it seems to be, play, they play some games in uh, at, uh, White Art, well, at Tottenham Stadium and uh, at Wembley. So there seems to be more um, American sports making their way in, but I think baseball's still got a ways to go yet. Uh, uh, and things like that. But um, just this is one thing I'm always sort of curious of, um, and it could be past or present. Who's had the most influence uh, in your career on, on you as a player and a person? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, probably going back to the start and throughout me, my life, I'd probably say my dad, to be honest. Um, I know I've had lots of great coaches growing up. Um, but my dad was my first ever coach. He ran ran the Sunday League team before I got I got picked, and I feel like he's almost given me like great advice and 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 different, you know, just just helped me along the way. Uh, never being too pushy. Um, he just he knew the the type of player I was, and he knew what you get from me. So he's almost had to help me in the right way and 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 be positive and have a positive outlook. And that goes for all my family really. But my dad was my first my first coach. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great answer. Great answer. Um, did you have a favorite player when you were uh, growing up? Um, yeah, it would be Steven Gerrard. Um, but obviously, you, you probably would have expected that. So, you know, the one who was, uh, well, I'll give you another two. It was it was Jamie Carragher um, because he was another scouser as well. And I, I loved his passion for, for the club and the, the game and the way he played. And it was around my age, Fernando Torres at Liverpool. Yes. Oh, you can't go wrong with any of those answers, Phil. So, um, no, great. not thanks. at all. Thanks for doing that, Liam. Back over to you, Phil. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, Tony's uh, rapid fire. And then we just have one more segment on the show. And this one is more football related. Uh, and this is Peter Latham, who's, of course, the chairman of the Accrington Stanley Supporters Trust. Uh, and he also uh, schedules a lot of these interviews with us. Uh, and Peter usually sends in some questions to us, and that's called Peter's Corner. Uh, and uh, Peter has sent in a few ones today, and, and some of these we've actually touched on a, a little bit already. Uh, but the first one that he asked uh, for Peter's Corner is, uh, you're part of a healthy Merseyside group at Stanley. Has this helped you settle in and feel more at home on the squad? Yeah, I think that's a massive, massive thing here for settling in. Um, there's obviously four or five of us in the car every day. Um, we meet up and uh, we drive in together. So one of us drives and there's, there's four or five of us. So we have a good laugh on the way in. So we're, we're already in a good mood on, on the way to team and on the way home. And obviously the staff, most of them being from, from Liverpool as well. Is, yeah. um, that's, that's been a big help for me. And, you know, uh, they're not biased towards scouts, but the you know it's just a, a scouts thing. We 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 all seem to get on and have similar banter and have a laugh. So it's um, it has been very good for me. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure that that's got to make it easier to to have some people that uh, you know probably grew up uh, in the same area as you know, maybe went to the same 
places and things well, like you, that. The thing is, the thing is, fellow, is that you don't need any translators. You all, you all, everybody understands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, get a lot of that when the sort of happens. You have to, you have to slow down for them. My uh, my wife, when she first heard John Coleman speak, uh, she said, "I can't understand the word he says." I said, "Well, he's, <laughs> he's not he's not bad. Wait till you see some of the other, or some of the others." But now she's getting uh, she's getting to understand it uh, a lot better. So, but anyway, sorry, Phil, I interrupted you there. Go ahead. Oh no, no problem at all, Ed. And yeah, so the uh, the next question from Peter, and this is another one that, that we've already touched on a little bit, but he said, uh, uh, making challenging tackles is an integral part of your uh, combative midfield role. Uh, do you yeah. feel that the number of yellow cards is justified or that you've been treated harshly on uh, some of these? Um, yeah, I would say I've been treated harshly on some of them. Um, but some of them are definitely justified. Like there's some games where I walk off and think, yeah, that was a definite yellow card and, and it was a bit of a stupid one. I didn't need to make that tackle. But I do think sometimes the referees have it in for me. Um, you know, with certain players, they, they probably have your like mark before the game, like watch out for him. He, he's an aggressive partner. He's, uh, this player dives, this player does this. It, I do think it, it's going to be in people's heads. And I think other teams sometimes know that as well now. So when I make a tackle, sometimes it's there's a big reaction from the, the other team's bench, and sometimes I think, Jesus Christ, it, it wasn't even that bad. But they 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 just yeah, a lot of simulation on the other yeah. side. Well, a yeah, couple of yeah. times there's there was a couple of pe- uh, one or a couple of yellow cards you got that were um, really in injury time or extra time of injury time in the second half, which you know, like you go five minutes and then you're into seventh or eight minute. Um, yeah, and the yeah. referee hasn't blown, and you've got a card. I mean, it, the time should have whistle should have been blown. I know that's been said a couple of times, but uh, that's got to be frustrating when really the game should have been expired, and they give you yeah. a yellow card. So yeah, definitely. Like that one at Cheltenham, uh, like John uh, the gaffer spoke about on on his interview. Um, like I was last man, and the ball went out of play, and I was thinking it's nil nil. If I don't if I don't move this ball away now and, and stop and taking the quick throw, I was thinking if they score. It's it's my fault, so I I sort of have to do that for the team. I felt, um, but yeah, it's it is frustrating sometimes. But you get you get some some decisions your way, and you don't get some your way. You just gotta put up with it, and we've gotta try and get back in the team now. When when whenever that comes. Yeah, that's uh, the best attitude to have. I I think as I mean. It's just one of those things, especially in in League One where you don't have VAR or anything like that. That you know, sometimes uh, the decision is going to go against you. Sometimes uh, it won't. So he's got to got to hope that more go your way over the the course of things. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the, uh, the next question that, that Peter had is, uh, he says uh, that you're a big part of our midfield and wants to know who are your favorite midfield partners to play with. Oh, that's a bit, that's a tough one, man. It probably depends who it is for coming up against, but I would say um, I do love playing with, with the skipper, um, Seamus, to be honest. I think he's, uh, obviously, I'm, I'm quite a big talker on the pitch. Um, but I'm still quite young and, and inex- I'd, I'd say I'm an inexperienced player but I feel like I'm, I'm not this season like I've, I've obviously played a lot of minutes and I feel like I'm up to speed and I can I can talk to the team and I'm, I'm a vocal part of the team but playing with the skipper Seamus he, he, he directs you he, he helps everyone else on the pitch and it helps you to be in your position and I, I feel like I always know where he's going to be which is a good thing Um I know how he works. Um, it's obviously all the other midfielders are great to play with as well, but maybe Seamus' experience with us, us younger lads is, is a massive thing. And you, you know, I'm so, so glad that you brought that up because Seamus is a guy where, where what he does, it's not going to show up on the stat sheet and it's not going to be obvious. But if you watch him game in and game out, I mean, I, I can't think of any player that I've, I've ever seen almost it just has a knack for being where he needs to be in the right spot. He's always where the ball is at. He, he's always in the right position to mark his man. And he's also the guy that he's going to get the thing started from the back. Uh, he, he's the one working the ball up to the midfield. And uh, the, the whole team 
uh, just run so much more smoothly when he, he's out there on the pitch and his contributions just, you know, it almost can't be overstated. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I do. I definitely agree. Um, and obviously, yeah, he, he's still he's still really fit for his age. Um, you know, he's he's an experienced player. He's he's coming towards the, probably the back end of his career now, but I still, he's still really fit when he when he's playing and covers a lot of ground for the team. Would you consider yourself a similar type of player to him? Um, yeah, I would. To be honest, that's probably that's probably why I said that. Um, I think at the start of the season it was. The formation you're playing it was either me or him that was going to play, um, but then I felt like when he came into the team and I was playing with him, it sometimes gives me a license to press forward more and take the ball after the team a little bit higher up instead of being in front of the back four because I always know shame is to be mocking up behind me to to cover up. But yeah, I, I do think we are quite similar players. We we like to break the play up. We like to play one or two touch and give it to the more attacking players. Yeah. All right, well, Peter has a few more questions here, and there's a couple of them that, that we've already really talked about, so uh, so I'm just going to go with his last two here. Uh, the first of, of the last two he had was, uh, what is your career goal at Stanley, and uh, do you see yourself as a potential captain for the club in the future? Um, I'd say, obviously, the, the upcoming goal for, for being with Stanley is to stay in, in League One. I think that's massive for the for the football club, for the fans, for, for everyone associated with it, for the players, for the staff. Um, I, no one wants to get relegated, of course, but it's, I think it's a massive thing that we that we stay up. And obviously we're in the semi-final at the Papa John's next week. Um, so it'd be great to, to win that semi-final and, and take the club to Wembley for the, the first time. That'd be that'd be huge. And I just want Massive. to keep playing games for Atkinson. Um, keep playing games for Atkinson, keep improving, and hopefully if we stay in the league next year, we can um, rebuild and have, have a more positive season and be, be looking more up the table, yeah. Um, don't want to look too far ahead. I just, I just like to think, stay fit, keep working hard, keep pushing others, and, and I know the staff will do that. They, they push it every day to, to be better. So, um, yeah, it's just it's just one of them, really, yeah. And with the captain, with the captain one, um, I'd like to think I'm quite vocal and, and, and I set the tone for the team sometimes and I feel like I am a leader on the pitch and uh, I'm, I'm loud and not scared to say what I think. Um, and I try and take a lot off Sean McConville and Seamus and, and the other experienced lads. Um, and if that, that responsibility was ever called upon me, um, I'd be more than, I'd be, I'd be buzzing to, to do that for the club. I've, I've done it once this season in a Papa John's game which is more of a, it was a younger side, but it was a great feeling to have the captain's armband on, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that, at 23 years old, that's a, a huge accomplishment to, to be a leader of the team. And, and we definitely, uh, as uh, as fans watching the, the team, we definitely consider you to be one of the leaders, one of the core members out there, and, and definitely uh, somebody that, that we hope to see with Accrington for uh, for time to come, and uh, would would love to see you wearing that that captain's band in the future. Uh, so now yeah. Peter's last uh, last question here right, was he said uh, uh, apart from obvious things like scoring more goals and and winning the uh, the area of the the pitch that you're in, uh, what areas of your game are you looking to improve on the most? Um, yeah, like you just said, uh, scoring more goals sometimes when I am playing higher up, that, that, that would be a good thing. Um, and another one would be maybe to, to set more goals up. Um, I know that's not my my strong role in the team. Like uh, I give the ball to, to Ethan, to Tommy Lees, to you know, Seb Quirk and Sean McConville, was, uh, Sean Morley, I'd, I'd say and give them the ball to create. But I think another thing to be bold would be to create from deep. So, Instead of maybe sometimes just putting it in an area, maybe pick someone out in behind. Um, I just need to keep keep looking for them and, and find the right spaces and and improving my quality on the ball. Sometimes, yeah, I think that's a that's a big thing for me and to keep improving me defending. Um, you know, there's good players in League One. It's getting, I, I believe it's getting. Obviously, I've only been in the league for two seasons, but you look at the teams in the top eight now and. They are really good. Like some of them could uh, players could a lot of them players could probably play in in the championship maybe. Uh, so the, the the level of the the league is really good. So you're playing off against tricky attacking players. Obviously, I'm in a more defensive role sometimes. So 
defending is a big thing. I've always, I've always thought I was a, a decent defender, one v one, but to improve that even more and and, and become become even more solid to be great and, and keep the, the the goals out at the end. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely something that I agree with and that Tony would as well, especially watching over the past five seasons as Accrington's been in League One, that if the overall quality of the league itself has just grown exponentially, especially with some of the bigger teams that have come down. And League One, uh, it is a tough league these days. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It really is. And, and you know we've played some games against the, the top teams. We've obviously had some some bad results and some bad performances. But I look back at the game where we played this switch at home. Who've got arguably one of the best squads in the league. Um, you know they're, they're paying millions of pounds for, for some players, and, and and we're coming up against them with with a budget that nowhere near matches that. And we got beat two nil at home, but we were we were well in the game until we can see that from a set piece in in the seventy fifth minute. So you think. If that could have been nil nil for a bit longer, I mean, if the goal, we we can beat those teams. Um, it's obviously a, a tough task, but but we we believe we can beat anyone. Yeah. Yeah, and that's. Uh, I mean, I I was at that match too, and it uh, the you've always played well against Ipswich uh, at the Wham and, and and other teams as well. It's it is a tough division with, and you you think when you get three top teams and move up to the championship. That that's going to help, but then you get three good teams that come down from the championship. So it's always a it's an uphill battle. But uh, one of the, you you did you did touch on when you came over to Stanley for a, a trial. Um, how uh, how did the connection to Stanley come about? Was there uh, some inquiries uh, from their end, or, or what was the story behind that? Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I think it was I think someone at Liverpool. Um, had co- had a contact with someone at Athens Stanley, so he was just basically putting my name out there that I was that I was available, um, and uh, you know to different clubs and and Athens were one of the first ones to come back and say yeah like uh, come down for a trial and, and and see how it goes. So um, that that's all I know of it really. And I went down for I played two games for Athens and on trial and you know, like the reserve team games um, and had a few training sessions as well. So. It was a uh, that, that was really good for me. Yeah. The um one thing I wanted to sort of ask too is is, and it's sort of a, a two part question is that because of the injuries this year, uh, and the fact that you're you guys are in a relegation battle, um how how big is the mental part aspect of of the game when you're when you sort of got those challenges? How important is that is that when you go on the pitch to, with the right mental attitude? Yeah, that that that's such a big thing. Like you see, you see teams that are doing well, like um, you know, like Plymouth and Sheffield when they near the top of the league, and the, their confidence is is through the roof. Do you know what I mean? They they go out there thinking, oh, we we've won, we've won the last however many. We're we're going to win again. Obviously, we're in the, the opposite scenario where we've we've been beat or we've we drew quite a lot of games, and you know it, it can get you down. Like you're coming in from games thinking, oh, we've been beat again, like. You know, you need to pick yourself up ready for, for Saturday or for Tuesday again. Um, and I think the the experience lad in the team and, and the staff, massive for that. Like, I've never been in this situation before. Some of the other lads have. So listening to them talk and, and their thoughts and feelings about it can can bring you up. And I think, like like the gaffer keeps saying, we need to just stick together, keep working hard. You know, we put in a good performance against Wickham the other night and we, we just couldn't get that goal. And then we go and concede another one. So we know we we I felt like we had a better team the other night, but their experience shown we just need to keep fighting and keep plugging away. And we, we've all got to believe that the the goals will come and we, and we will win games. Um, and then once we get them first one or two wins, I think the confidence of us we're getting players back from injury you now. So hopefully we can we can finish the season finish the season well and and, and survive in the league. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, what you you touched on that was was uh, sort of the next question I had was uh, some of the players coming back, like with uh, Michael Nottingham and and Mitch Clark, um, um, both getting some time in on the under twenty threes uh, the other day. Um, that's yeah. uh, that's got to be a lift for for the first squad, first team squad, because all of a sudden you got it's like two new transfers or two new signings, isn't it coming in? Yeah, 
almost. Exactly, yeah. That's huge. Like we've had we've had knots missing all season. I know he played played once in the FA Cup and then and then come off injured again. Um, but he's a massive part of our defence. Um, you know, he played every single game last year. Um, he's an experienced defender. He's a leader. And and Mitch is uh, when he when he's fired and he's he's great. He's up and down. He's he's putting crosses in. He's defender. He's one v one defending. One of the best I've ever seen. Um, and and yeah, he's a he's a massive player for us as well. Um, and obviously Seamus coming back into the fold as well. He he played a half so. It'd be great to have him on the team, and I think there's a few more getting closer as well. So, yeah, what about uh, what about Matt Lowe? Uh, is he getting close? I, I know that uh, he had mentioned that in March uh, might be when he would come back. And uh, uh, has he been uh, at the training at all? Um, he's been doing quite a bit of running, I think, and I think he is getting quite close to to returning. I don't know when he return on on the actual on the pitch, but I heard he could be joining in. In some training with us next week, um, so hopefully that that that'll get him back soon, and I'm sure they'll be fired up and ready to go. Obviously, missing such a yeah. long period, of time. so it's great yeah. having them play and competition for places. So it pushes us all to do better on the pitch, and we can all push each other in the right direction. Yeah, we talked to Matt Lowe, uh, what was it, about two months ago, Tony, and, and yeah, he was really fired up to, to try to get back, and, and of course, you guys have some really big matches in March and April, and you know, obviously, the, the striker position as a whole has been just injury riddled for you this year, and then obviously, with, uh, with Kobe leaving and everything after last year, it's been a struggle. Uh, now, you, you yeah. did bring in uh, Nathan Butler uh, Oyedeji, I believe. <laughs> Maybe you could uh, tell, tell me on that one, but uh, uh, I know. No, I don't know. I know, his, I know his first name, Nathan. That's what I call him. That, so. Yeah, <laughs> Nathan. This was good enough. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> but but, uh, but but I was just wondering. Uh, so he uh, he's been. Uh, I think he started one match and, and he's uh, been on the bench for the last few matches. Is he somebody that uh, that you expect to uh, to have more time with the team once he uh, kind of gets uh, integrated in and uh, maybe have uh, two or three options at striker up front going down the stretch? Um, yeah, I think so. I think he gives you a different a different dimension. He's He's obviously quite small in stature, but he, he's really quick. And uh, what I really like about him after coming in so far is, is his attitude. You know, uh, you'll have some lads who, who come in and, and can't buy into the way Athleton as a club's run. You know, he's come from a big club like Arsenal. Um, you know, probably getting weighted on hand and foot. Well, they're not that. Let's let's face it, Liam. They're not that big of a club. They're, they're not that uh, big. I, 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 other teams are, uh, other than Accrington, Arsenal's my other team. So, so Tony's going to give me a hard time on that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, exactly like you were saying. I mean, I I was kind of joking around. Uh, I I noticed that. Uh, so, so Aaron Presley is six four, and then uh, Nathan is five ten. And I said, you know, hey, that that's the exact same heights as uh, Giroud and, and Mbappe. So it works for them. <laughs> <laughs> some some said he might be he might be five ten if he's standing on the phone book. But uh, anyway, one yeah, one. I don't think he's five ten. Yeah, I think he's about five five. To be honest. But. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm, um, I'm just going with, with what it says here on the internet. It's got to be fun. Well, if you're on the internet, <laughs> if you're on the internet it's correct. Um, <laughs> the, the, um, do, do players look at the table or do you sort of don't dwell on it? You know, or, or do you actually look at it? Uh, from a personal point of view, I, I, I definitely do. Uh, you know, like I said before, it's the first time I've been in this. A scenario where I'm in a relegation battle, like obviously I was part of this, the squad last year. You know, I wasn't one of the, the starting players all the time last season, but you know we were in a mid-table type position, so we weren't really looking at relegation, or we weren't really looking at the playoffs. Whereas this year, obviously talking about it, and you know we we want to try and push out them relegation places. I think I think sometimes looking at the table, I know people. You hear lots of Premier League players saying, "Oh, you know, we don't look at the table. We we focus on the next game." And of course, you focus on the next game, but surely subconsciously, you you want to look at the table and think, "Right, if you can win this one, we're up there." And you know, it gives you that extra incentive to to jump above other teams. And I'm, I'm sure everyone does it. To be honest, yeah, I think people are lying when they say they don't. 
Yeah, and I think uh, like the next week, it's a big week, obviously, with uh, uh, the game on Saturday um, against Shrewsbury, and then you play uh, Bolton, but then Cheltenham. So, I mean, there's no, like, at this time of year, and it's a cliche, but there's no, there's no easy games now. But uh, would would you um, be able to play in the uh, Papa John's? Would you, these, does the uh, two game suspension apply to that game, or are you available? Um, no, I'm available for that one. I'm available for selection. It's the uh, it's the two next league games, so that's Shrewsbury and Burton. But yeah, I am available for selection. Okay. It's, it's always my game's ball. Brilliant. Yes. Yeah, good. The one uh, one thing, just for uh, sort of last question, I wanted to sort of ask is, um, and again, this is what I've I've read, and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, your contract exp- expires at the end of this season. Um, does the club have an option, or are you uh, in uh, in plans to have uh, another contract with Stanley? What's your sort of future hold for you? Um, so the internet line again, my contract till the end of next season. Um, so to, what year are you now? Yeah, my contract until twenty twenty June twenty twenty four. Okay. Um, and then the club do have an option on me at the end of that year as well. Um, and yeah, I just. I'm just going to keep working hard and, and keep keep pushing, try and get as many minutes as I can, and and see what happens whether I, I get offered a, a new contract or whatever. But obviously, the club with the situation we're in at the minute, no one's no one's worrying about that. We're all just fighting yeah. for the same thing, and that's that surviving in League One, yeah. Well, if you need anything for, in the way of stats, Phil's our man. He's uh, he's given a couple of players <laughs> some information on stats that they didn't know about that they, they can use going into the negotiations. But um, no, it's um, it's it's been a pleasure. Hey, Liam, big I, I stat is, is most minutes played. I, I mean, right there. I mean, all you got to say is, "Hey, I'm out there more than anybody else." <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, no, but um. Yeah, it's been uh, we've we've really enjoyed it. It's one been it's a, it's one I've been looking forward to since I since I did talk to you there back last uh, last uh, August September. So we're, we're glad to have yeah. you on. Glad you did it, and um, yeah, it's been it, it, yeah. yeah, I've enjoyed it. It's been a thr- it's been a thrill for us, and um, we we wish you all the best for your career and um, and and obviously Stanley getting uh, out of the bottom four. And we wish you all the well, and thanks for doing this. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, absolutely. We can't thank you enough for coming on the show, and we look forward to seeing you uh, on uh, on Accrington Stanley this season and in the near future, and hopefully, uh, you know, taking over that captain's band from uh, Seamus one day, like we talked about a little bit earlier, and. Uh, uh, just one more big stat here that you have. Uh, you have 41 uh, tackles, one and 47 interceptions so far this season, which are, are both above the top uh, top numbers of the team. So uh, that definitely uh, lends itself to uh, to your role. So uh, so keep doing what you're doing there. And uh, otherwise, uh, let's uh, finish up with uh, our famous on Stanley on. So here we go on three, one, two. Three on Stanley on. Cheers, Liam. Cheers, Liam. Guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Have a great one, Liam.